Okay, today I am going to be rebuilding a power director clutch out of a D series tractor. This one here happened to come out of a D17 series 4. So first thing you do before you start tearing into this is you want to go around and put either number or letter tag on each tab um, so that uh, you, when you reassemble it, it goes together the correct way. These do come from the factory pre-balanced so if you have them labeled and put them better back together uh, the same way you should be good to go. Um, on mine I just put uh, letter stamps A, B and C. There's three tabs and uh, I'll tear it down and go through it. It's, it's really very simple to do. The tedious part gets when you go to shim it, which we'll go over later. Let's first start with these pins. Once you get the clips out, it comes apart uh, fairly easily. You just push the pins out. Pin should just push, push out fairly easily. There's not a whole lot of tension behind them. Might need a little bit of alrighty. Now we'll go around and start taking the bolts out of these tabs. Okay, the tab bolts here are half inch Okay, the bolts come out. Set the parts all off the side. Now yeah, one bolt that wants to be hung up. Now as you can see part of the problem with this clutch is the shifting collar is broken worn through. This is supposed to be one piece. It's supposed to look like this. So that's why I'm taking the clutch off apart on this here side. It's easier to go from the opposite side. Now when you start taking this apart, make sure you keep the shims in order. Um, remember, you, you've already pre-marked the tabs A, B, and C. So we want to take these out and make sure that they go back in the same way. We will have to fine-tune it once we uh, uh, start adjusting it. These arms will just swing out of the way now that the pins are out. This is going to enable the, the clutch here to pull straight up. Just pull out, there's, there's three little springs in here. So pull it straight up. Put that off to the side. And here's your three little springs. You don't want to lose these. Get a better view of those. Okay, just sit these off the side in a place where they're not going to roll off. Okay, these here are so let's get back to these shims. This is tab A, so I'm going to take these out. I'm just going to lay these out in, in order. I'm going to take the center ones out. Notice the center ones, center shims, are quite a bit longer 
than the outside shims. There's a reason for that, we'll get into that later. So just lay them out nice and neat, keep them in the same order. That was A. Slide this this way. Just tab B. And tab C. Alright. Now, once again, I've already gone through and rebuilt this clutch here. Um, I'm disassembling it to, uh, to basically show you how simple it is. So in between each clutch plate, there is a clutch lining. This is a clutch lining. Um, if you notice, there's grooves in here. Um, as long as your, your clutch lining is showing grooves, it's still a good plate. So if you ever tear one apart and it still has these grooves in it, you still have a good disc. We're going to set these off to the side. We're going to set them down in the order that we're taking them off. So that when we put it back together, it goes back in the correct order. You should have three clutch linings and on each side. Now this is a special one. This here is this, these here are the two centers. This separates the high, the high and low range. Now you have a second set of these springs. Again, don't lose the springs. There's three of them. I should say three on each side. Three on high range, three on low range. And that's it. Now the preload plate has these valleys in here that the rollers ride up and down. So if you have a hand clutch and you, whenever you put it in high or low range, um, you're you're actually pushing the roller up out of the valley, which is a neutral position. You're pushing it up out of neutral up onto this ridge on this here side. Um, if you have a hand clutch that don't like to stay in high or low range and in your clutch is actually uh, pretty tight, odds are these plates are worn out. And what happens is, I don't know if you can see it on the camera very well, the uh, roller is riding up and up and out of that valley, it starts wearing a flat spot and it actually tapers down back into that valley so what happens is when it gets wore down like that the roller don't have a flat spot to sit on so what it does is it rolls back down into the valley into neutral and this here clutch plate uh, came out of this here clutch we've already replaced them but I wanted to kind of go through and, and uh, show you kind of how that's done Here's the other side as well. You can see the wear spot up in here. Uh, once that gets worn down, again, there's not a flat there for the rollers to sit on, so it will try to roll back down into the valley here, which is a uh, neutral position. Now this here is just being held in by weight, so if you flip it over and kind of jiggle around a little bit, it will, it will fall out. Okay, 
that off to the side. Now this here is the good where good preload plate. You can see there's no valleys worn into it. It's just nice, brand new. Okay, they have a snap ring on the inside. So this is the preload plate. In this inside here, there is a a uh, Belleville washer that actually creates the tension or the pressure. To get this apart, you want to pinch these together. Uh, I do it with a vise. I'll put the vise on. I'll put a couple pairs of vise grips around the outside edge, going around to compress the Bell Belleville washer, and then you can get that snap ring out of there pretty easily. So now this is, is back together. We're just going to put it back in. It should drop in place. But make sure that the valleys here that the rollers right in are to the outside of the casting. You want it to point to the outside of the casting when you put it in. And it should pretty much fall into place. It's a little tight fit. It's in there pretty good. Okay, the back side also has this thrush wash. They call it a thrush washer. See, it has two little tabs on there. The tabs actually go into uh, there. Tabs actually go into uh, two holes that are up here. I put put a little bit of grease on there so that it would hold it in place for assembly. This off to the side. Okay, here's the other side. This here would be the high side. Again, it's the exact same preload plate as in the other one. And uh, I'll show you the the rollers so Let's see if I can get a good good view of this. The rollers are on this uh, located in the linkage right here, right in here. As you engage and disengage the clutch, they rotate in and out, going from neutral to high or low, whichever way you're going. And you also want to inspect those to make sure that there's no flats on the rollers. Um, the only time I've ever encountered uh, rollers with flats on them is in a WD-45 clutch. Not to say it won't happen in the E-Series. Okay, let's start the reassembly process. I'm going to put these back in. kind of a snug fit but they will go in. Now always remember you have a clutch plate then you have the clutch liner. Clutch plate clutch liner. When you put these in try to get the teeth kind of lined up a little bit or when you put in the, uh, the gears. Liner, clutch plate, clutch liner, clutch plate, clutch liner, center plate. The center plate. The center plate has these little dimples in them around the perimeter. And what those are used for is a pocket for your springs to sit down inside. They'll sit right down inside there so everything stays lined up. Okay, so at this here point, we're going to put the springs down through here and make sure that they're seated. And there's a little pocket on the bottom side as well. Alright, that's in. Now we're going to put the last pressure plate on, which is the center pressure plate. It's different from the rest. I'm going to sit in there and 
Wiggle around a little bit, get the springs, the springs will fall right in. Okay, let's put in the gears now. When you put in the gears, make sure that the larger diameter for the spline shaft is in the front of the clutch. Now it should be in order in the way that you, that you uh, had taken it out. You might have to turn it a little bit to get all the uh, plates lined up. Should not that gear should not come out past the center pressure plate. Okay, with that in place, we're going to put the next gear in. They have a, a mating surface here, a pocket in a in a rib. Just set it in there. It'll mesh real well. Then start building the low side of the clutch. The two center pressure plates go together. There's nothing in between them except for the shims when we put those in later. But basically got a pressure plate, clutch lining, pressure plate, now when you're doing this, keep the keep these tabs, keep these tabs lined up with the tabs coming up the side. Good plate, lining, pressure plate, lining. Okay. I get these babies lined back up and now we want to insert our three springs. Alright. Okay, we'll take the last pressure point out of the housing. And we're going to sit it on here, so line our springs up. And all these springs got to go in that little pocket up there. There we go. Looking good. Okay. Okay, now it's time to put the, the back half of the casting on. Remember, line up your, your letters or your numbers. A to A, B to B. That way the clutch remains balanced. And just kind of wiggle it around. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little snug. Okay, to wiggle it around a little bit, just don't not too much. Otherwise, you'll pull the springs out of the pocket. Okay, this fell together real nice. Okay, at this point, we're going to put the bolts back in. Want to have the bolts come from the bottom up so that the bolts are actually sticking out towards the back of the clutch. Now we don't want to put these on tight, we just want to put them in here so, the, so it keeps the, holds the clutch together.
Okay, now we will put the pins back in to hold the linkage together. Take it up. When you get to this point, you'll 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 be able to see the uh, where the rollers ride in that uh, preload plate. If you're doing it from this side of the clutch, make sure these are up. Put on the little clips. If you're careful with uh, taking these off, why well, you could reuse them. Otherwise, if you mangle them up too much, they're like four dollars a piece for Magco. Put them on there and make sure they're in the little groove and pinch them shut. Turn the groove, just pinch them shut. Alright, okay now we'll put the shift collar back on. It has a pretty tight fit. That's pretty tight. Three pins in. Now I'll put the retaining rings on.
All right, now I'll put the little retaining clips on. So now comes the tedious part of putting the shims in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this back on the tractor so uh, I have something that will hold it, something I can spin it around as I'm putting the shims in. And this here is going to start the more tedious part of the process. It's not hard, it's just very tedious. Now I have the power director mounted on the shaft. Um, I went through and made sure that the shim packs were the right thicknesses. So on uh, each outside shim pack is supposed to be 85 thousandths and on the center one is supposed to be 35 thousandths. That's what you want to start off with all on all three of these when you first start out. And there's a difference in the shims. The two outer side shims are short. And the center shim between the two clutch plates is the longer shim. The longer shim only goes in the center the shorter shims only go on the outside. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to measure the distance in between these two plates 
on each side of the clutch on all three spots around the clutch. We do this when it's disengaged and then we do it when it's engaged. Okay, so I got a pencil and paper here. As you can see, I have it marked H and L. H for high side, L for low side. And then below that, I have a D and E for disengaged and engaged. So we're going to have four different sets of numbers, and then when we get done, uh, we have to add them up, divide them, and see what our average is. So the high side is on the back side of the clutch, or towards the operator seat. We're just going to measure the gap in here. And that's about 68 thousandths, if you can see that. All right, now I'm going to rotate it, take the next measurement. Which is 63 thousandths. is right at 70,000. And I'm going to go ahead and do the low side. Seventy-three thousands. That's seventy-three thousandths. And seventy-five thousandths. Okay, now it's time to engage the clutch.
Okay, that just engaged the low side of the clutch. Now we'll go through and take these measurements. Okay, that is forty three thousandths. Three. We'll rotate it to the next one. And here is forty three thousandths as well. It's about fifty-three, fifty-three thou. Okay, that was the low side. Now disengage the low side and engage the high side. Okay, now with the high side engaged, we'll check these three. I think it's forty two thousandths. Next one. About thirty five. Thirty five dollars. Last one. That's about forty three. Okay, so here's what we did. We took all the, the six or four measurements, added those up, both the in, disengaged and engaged in both the high and low range. So that's these here numbers here. Okay. And then what we did was we took this number and divided it by 3, got that number, took this, this here number, divided it by 3, got that, and then we subtracted them and that gave us our average. So we do this on both the high and low range side. and we're getting our, our overall average of 27 thousandths on both sides which is, is interesting so the goal that we want this measurement to be at is between 42 thousandths and 46 thousandths 
So since this number is, is low, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take shims out of the outside on both sides and put them in the center. So if we if we remove ten thousandths on this side, we have to put ten thousandths in the center. If we take out ten thousandths on the outside, on this side, we would have to also add ten thousandths into the center. That's how it works. When we take the shims out of the outs, outside shim packs, they are the short shims. And we cannot put the short shims into the center. Because the center takes the long shim. The reason why they're longer is because the shims actually add support to the two center clutch plates. I do have a few extra of the center long shims, but to make sure I have enough, I went ahead and I made my own shims out of shim stock. But now I'm going to take the, the 10,000 shim off of each side and put uh, 20,000 in the center because 10 off of each side, which means we need to put 20 into the center. Okay, I'm going to remove one 10,000 shim from this side. Get that shim pack out of there. Take off one 10,000 shim. Put it back in. I'm going to take 10 thousandths out of this here side as well. Sometimes you got to be careful because they do stick together. You don't want to pull out 20 thousandths. Right. Put it back in. Now the center, we need to add 20 thou. And that goes into the center. Sometimes it's easier just to pull, pull the existing ones out a little bit. Get the other ones in. Because the spring is pushing against the two center clutch plates you have to spread them apart a little bit it also helps if you go around and loosen up the other ones a little bit other bolts get some tension off of it You don't want a whole lot of uh, space in there, otherwise the shims will start falling out on you. But at least you can get them pushed down in there all the way. I'll go ahead and snug these up. Okay, we just keep going around until you get the 10,000 shims out of each outside shim pack and add 
the two ten thousand shim to the center. Again, these like to stick together, so make sure you're taking out just one. They love to stick together. Okay. Go center again. Okay, lift those up a little bit. Now I gotta put two ten thousand shims in there. Again, I'm gonna mic each one to make sure. Okay, so that's a total of twenty thousandths. I'm adding to the center. Okay, and the last one. Loosen this guy up just a hair more. Like I said, this really gets to be the tedious part of the job. It's not hard, it's just just tedious. Okay. Okay. Now we tighten it back together and we go and re repeat the same process of getting the measurements, adding them up, dividing by three, and subtracting, subtracting the dimensions that you get from the engaged and the disengaged. Alright, now you just repeat this process until you get the uh, correct dimensions and uh, then it should be properly set. Thank you for watching and I hope this has been helpful.